Do you really know your own cycle? How long is it? When are you fertile? Are there some days you need to pay extra attention to? Do you know the symptoms which indicate your period? And can you see how changes to your routine influence your cycle? If you don't know the answer to those questions, this is for you. Today I'm going to show you how to analyze and interpret these, these data you have gathered and use it to have a better cycle experience. Once you've filled in three or more mandalas, I say minimum of three is good, you can start to study your own cycle and identify patterns. So before you can analyze your own cycle, it's obviously very helpful to know how the menstrual cycle works. And once you know how women in general work, you can then compare it to your own cycle because each and every woman is really different. Then the idea is to identify your own inner seasons, your own phases of your cycle and to kind of know when one starts and one ends. You can be more aware of your emotions, of your body, apply that to your work, to your exercise routine, to your relationships, to your own self-care routine. That knowledge is going to help you a lot to improve all of these areas. And you're going to be more prepared for the next cycle to come. So now I'm going to show you how to study and analyze your mandalas. Let's go. Take some time off your busy day and dedicate it to yourself. First, create your space. Our environment has a huge influence on our well-being and creativity. Spread your finished mandalas before you and have a piece of paper or notebook ready to write down your findings. Before you start, take a moment and do a quick cycle check-in. How are you feeling today? How is your mind? How is your energy? How are your emotions? Now first identify the things you want to analyze that are important for you at this moment. Are you trying to avoid pregnancy? or become pregnant? Are you struggling with PMS? Do you want to predict your period to plan a vacation? Or do you want to get to know your cycle to optimize your fitness routine, nutrition or working schedule? Now it's time to analyze. I will give you some examples of what I like to look at. The first thing I like to check is my cycle length. I write down the different lengths to get a better idea of my average length and possible patterns. Next I identify my fertile window. For that I write down the number of days of the shortest cycle, then deduct 18 from that number. Next I write down the number of the days of the longest cycle and deduct 11. That leaves me with my fertile days. Furthermore, I like to observe how my vaginal discharge changes over the course of a menstrual cycle. By checking several cycles, I can identify both dry and wet days and observe how my discharge is connected to ovulation. More things you can look at. You can analyze bodily symptoms like temperature changes, pains, bloating or sensitivity to know when and how to take care of yourself and your body. You can check the mood smileys on each mandala and identify the more challenging days which repeat each month. You can compare your energy levels to personalize your workout routine accordingly. You can identify the days you enjoy being social and when you crave more me time to schedule dates and meetings accordingly. You can also look at the influence of changes to routine, travel, emotional and physical state and much more. Congrats, you just get to know yourself a little bit better. The most helpful information I get out of my um, Luna Mandalas are first of all the length of my cycle. So I realized that each cycle has a different length. Sometimes it's 28 days long, sometimes it's 33 days long. But kind of every two months I have a short cycle and the rest is kind of always the same length. So it's also super helpful to know that. How do I know also how long my cycle is going to be or when my menstruation is going to come? Is I know when my ovulation is happening. So I feel 
in my body when the ovulation is happening. I check my discharge you know, and according to that I know also my fertility window. And I know very well how long my period's gonna be, um, how the discharge, how the blood flow is going to be, you know, which days I need to take extra care, like day one, two, three. I prefer to be in the house and not do much things. I take some time off for myself. Day six is kind of for me um, a transition period and then I go and get more energy. I can adapt my exercise routine according to that too. So I know which days I can do cardio, which days I can do more strength training. And you know the days before the period where I need a bit more stretching or like fluid stuff that can really connect me to my emotions and help me to release. According to my work I also know what time of the cycle I'm more productive, which is usually day 7 to 14. I'm really productive. After that when I enter, you know, the third half of my cycle, I'm more in a kind of analytic, um, revising, kind of cleaning up mood, not so much in a producing mood. So right now I'm on day 10. So you can see I'm really active, I'm really open, I'm really motivated and I'm really good at communicating and speaking and, you know, getting myself out there. And then once you did a few mandalas, you identify your kind of normal cycle and then you can also see what influences your normal cycle. So for, my, for example, for me, when I go traveling, that always disrupts everything. And I can check, okay, what can I do to kind of keep that steady flow, you know, to keep that cycle kind of balanced. Also, when I change my nutrition, you know, and I don't eat really well, or again, when I'm somewhere else and eat different kind of food, I can see how that affects my cycle. Also, when there's some stressful situations, emotional challenges, you know, oof, my cycle is out. And that is super beautiful to kind of analyze for yourself and see how delicate this cycle is. And it's never stagnant, it's never the same. Once you make these findings, you can choose to write them down, you know, and do every month kind of an analysis. What I do, I do this every three or four months. So two or three times a year, I sit down and do this analysis, this study to see what's going on, you know, because also over the years, this is going to change. Your cycle is always going to change. Um, when you're 21, it's going to be different than when you are 31 or 41. So when you have had no kids yet, or after you have kids, it's going to be different. And sometimes I just realize something during the month, like a day where I'm really irritated. I'm like, I wonder if this is like that every month. And I go and check, and yes, usually it's day 21. I could not be more convinced of this tool. I swear, I started it, and since then I've been doing it without stopping, because it helps me so much now I really start to get to know myself. I hope this can be of help to you to get to know yourself better and to have a better menstruation and cycle and life experience in all areas. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to connect with you. If you like what I do, subscribe, hit the like button. It really helps me a lot to grow and to keep producing helpful content relating to women's health, menstruation, movement, Colombian tradition, because I'm in Colombia right now, if you didn't know. <laughs> so have a wonderful cycle. Muchas gracias. Pause.